welcome one and all. I haven't done a ranking since December and I was in the mood to do more of them outside of the holidays so I put a poll on Twitter and the masses voted for me to rank all five Hannibal Lecter films from worst to best. I love the Hannibal Lecter character. He is this incredible psychology specimen who is fascinating to watch and learn about, so I am all for talking about films featuring him. I did an installment in my Story Behind series last year on the character and the story and the real life person that inspired Thomas Harris to create this iconic character. If you want to learn about the real life story behind the character, you can check out my video. You'll find a link here in the description or at the end of the video for good measure. If you don't already know, Dr. Hannibal Lecter is a fictional character in a series of suspense novels written by Thomas Harris, first appearing in 1981, and later those books were adapted into films and a TV series. But today we talk about the films. In fifth place, sadly, is Manhunter. Released in 1986 and written and directed by Michael Mann, the film is based on Thomas Harris's 1981 novel Red Dragon. The film focuses on FBI profiler Will Graham coming out of retirement to lend his talents to an investigation on a serial killer known as the Tooth Fairy. In doing so, he must confront the demons of his past and meet with notorious serial killer Dr. Hannibal Lecter, who nearly counted Graham amongst his victims. This film sees our famous cannibal played by Brian Cox and lead hero Will Graham played by William Peterson, while our central villain, the Tooth Fairy, aka Francis Dollarhide, is played by Tom Noonan. I did enjoy this film. It is interesting to see how different people can interpret the same piece of work. The focus in this is definitely on Graham, so that makes me glad that Peterson gave such a good performance. I did like the investigative aspects of this film, I just wish they had been stronger. This film was just a little too weak across the board for me. In a crime film, I want to be stimulated and I didn't feel there was enough detail in our villains and their motivations, which is a very important key component. Overall, I'm still grateful to this film for getting the Hannibal series rolling. I didn't, however, feel that Noonan did any justice to the character of Dollarhide, nor did Cox really embody the characteristics of Lecter as written by Harris. One odd thing about this film is that it's the only film of the five and even the series to spell the names of Lecter and Dollarhide differently. I'm not sure why. Lecter is meant to be spelled L-E-C-T-E-R, but this film spells it L-E-C-K-T-O-R, and Dollar Hide is only meant to be spelled with one L, whereas this film spells it with two. Just some facts I'd like to point out, because when I did a review of this film back in 2017, people were having a go at me for my spelling when I wasn't actually spelling it wrong. I was spelling it how these names are spelled in the context of the film, so blame the film, not me. In fourth place is Hannibal Rising, released in 2007 and directed by Peter Weber from a screenplay by Hannibal's creator Thomas Harris, based on his 2006 novel of the same name. In it, after the death of his parents during World War II, young Hannibal Lecter moves in with his aunt and begins plotting revenge on the barbarians responsible for his sister's death. So in case you didn't know, this is a prequel, and I love prequels because I love any opportunity to learn a character's backstory. However, while this film is decent, it was also a disappointment when compared to the rest of the series. I feel the reason it wasn't at the standard of the others is that Harris's heart wasn't in it. The only reason Harris wrote the book was because he feared someone else would and would do it wrong. In a way, he was pressured into it, and I think that hurt the overall story. You would think having the author of the book write the screenplay would mean the film would be perfect, but it isn't. For the most part, it stays true to the book, though I'm not sure why he changed the characters around, but I feel there is one scene that Harris removed that he shouldn't have, and it was the scene where Hannibal's uncle dies. In the book, Hannibal is already traumatized from the events in his youth, but watching his uncle, his last remaining relative, die because of someone else's cruelty was the catalyst that sets him on his path. So when he removed that scene from the film, it removed the key turning point in Hannibal's life. Instead, in the film, we see a constant angry young boy suddenly resort to murder for no reason and it doesn't make sense. On top of that, I don't feel Gaspard Yulio performs the role of Hannibal right, he just is too gleeful during his kills, and even though Hannibal is young in this, it just is a completely different tone for the character. While I don't enjoy this one all that much, I do enjoy the backstory and I do feel more comfortable revisiting this than I do Manhunter. Manhunter I watched once and I don't really feel like watching again. 
In third place is Hannibal, released in 2001 and directed by Ridley Scott, with a screenplay by David Mamet and Stephen Zalian, based on Thomas Harris's 1999 novel of the same name. In it, while living in exile, Hannibal Lecter tries to reconnect with now disgraced FBI agent Clary Starling and finds himself a target for revenge from a powerful victim. The best things about this movie is Anthony Hopkins and Gary Oldman's performances. Hopkins continues to play Lecter flawlessly and Oldman is completely unrecognisable. Watching these two on screen and then watching them together is brilliant. Problems with the story are where it deviates from the book, excluding Mason's sister I think was the right choice as the film wishes to focus on Hannibal, but writing Paul Krenler as a chauvinist and sexist pig who wants to screw everything that walks and tries to was not necessary. His character has always been a social climber who will simply sabotage anyone to get his way to the top, and he does this with Clarice, who in this film is played by Julianne Moore. But there was never any sexual motivation. We see one too many sexist themes in this movie which just weren't needed, although it did make me extra happy when Lecter killed Krenler. I wish the film had kept in some of the book's more shocking events as the ending in the film felt a little stale and could have benefited from the shock value that the book's ending had. I don't think Julianne Moore does a bad portrayal of Clarice. I felt her performance is in line with the book, but again, there's just something missing. In second place, and I know this is controversial, is The Silence of the Lambs. Released in 1991, the year of my birth, it's directed by Jonathan Demme with a screenplay by Ted Talley based on Thomas Harris's 1988 novel of the same name. In it, a young FBI cadet must confide in an incarcerated and manipulative killer to receive his help on catching another serial killer who skins his victims. This to this day remains one of the best films ever made and one of the best to be adapted from a book. Anthony Hopkins delivers one of the best performances of his career as Dr. Hannibal the Cannibal Lecter, far surpassing the one portrayed by Brian Cox five years earlier. Anthony Hopkins makes the character and his performance truly iconic. This film was what it was because of him, though the film itself delivers timeless dialogue, much of which comes from the book, and an in-depth look into killer psychology and one of the best games of cat and mouse to ever be portrayed on screen, and all of this would not be possible without the work of Thomas Harris, whose written works inspired these films. The back and forth between Jodie Foster's Clarice and Hopkins' Lecter is mesmerising to watch, and you can see how anyone, even a trained professional, can see them getting caught up in Lecter's charm. Another great aspect is the drastic difference between Lecter as a serial killer versus Buffalo Bill as a serial killer. The psychology of the two is enough to make you want to sign up to be a profiler, or oh, maybe that's just me. <laughs> and in first place in my ranking, because it's my opinion and you can hate me all you want, is Red Dragon. Released in 2002 and directed by Brett Ratner with a screenplay by Ted Talley, who also did the screenplay to The Silence of the Lambs, is based on the 1981 novel of the same name by Thomas Harris, and in it, a retired FBI agent with psychological gifts is assigned to help track down the Tooth Fairy, a mysterious serial killer. Aiding him is imprisoned forensic psychiatrist Dr. Hannibal the Cannibal Lecter. So we know the Red Dragon story was originally adapted into the film Manhunter, but it did not capture the tone of the book or the psychology of the characters the way this did. Ted Talley has a great ability to adapt these stories for the screen. Watching Red Dragon, you get the same sensations and you see that same intensity in the story as you do in The Silence of the Lambs, and that's thanks to Tally. Much of the dialogue from Red Dragon is identical to that in Manhunter, which I believe indicates just how much comes from the books themselves, which I appreciate. But the way the dialogue is performed in this film and how the scenes are filmed and set up is far superior and full of suspense and tension I just didn't experience in Manhunter. This is a brilliant prequel in terms of film timeline and shows more of Lecter's psychology and he seems to have an appreciation and fascination with profilers who have a rare sense of how a killer thinks or to a degree people who can empathise with them, people who he deems worthy of speaking to him. Though I doubt he sees anyone as on his level, we have at least seen two people who he feels are unique enough to pique his interest. Ray Fiennes plays the role of the Tooth Fairy and he truly outdoes himself as a tortured psychotic being whose psychosis comes from years of severe abuse. I love that this film allows us to have sympathy for Dollar Hyde and we can understand how someone can through years of abuse become this monster. And it's fascinating watching him go through this internal struggle, one that 
Edward Norton's character has understanding and compassion for. He can get inside the minds of killers, but as I said, he's capable of empathizing with them, which makes him even better at his job. This is without a doubt my favorite film in the Lecter series, and I've watched it like a billion times, and I could watch it a billion more. And there you have my ranking of the Hannibal Lecter films. I love watching the character, I love revisiting the films, mostly Red Dragon and The Silence of the Lambs because they are so brilliant. Anthony Hopkins does an outstanding job portraying this character that it's addictive to watch. So now that I've ranked these movies, it's your turn. Drop a comment down below and tell me how you personally rank these films. Thank you as always to my amazing patrons and a special welcome again to my two newest patrons. Thank you for joining in on the fun. That's enough for me and I will see you in my next video. Bye!